So today I thought it'd be a great time to do an updated video on how to reduce buffering on your Fire TV and Fire Stick. Okay, there's many different reasons for buffering. It could be your internet speed, it could be your device, or it could be the streams you are using. But you can do a few things to try and help these. First things we're gonna do, we're gonna have a little quick look at some of our settings. We're gonna look at our internet speed. We're gonna look at some of our storage, things like that, and see if that can help you. And we're gonna go through a few other bits. But before we do, if you are new here, do remember to hit that subscribe button. On the Docs Quippy channel, we bring you everything streaming related. Lots of stuff on Fire Sticks, Nvidia Shields, all your streaming apps, everything like that, and your tips and tricks to keep it working. And obviously, regular watchers, if you can watch through till the end, would really help us out. Okay, one of the first things which can really affect your streaming is your internet speed. So how do we check our internet speed? The easiest, simplest way, if you go to your settings, go to network, click on your network with the play button. And at the bottom there, you can run a speed test. So I'm going to run one on mine. So you run a speed test and this will tell you what you can stream. And this is actually really important for when you're picking a movie, whether you're using official or unofficial streams. I'm not here to judge you what you do, but if you're going to use a streaming service, if you've got a slow internet, you're not going to want to stream 20 gigabyte files, shall we say. Okay, so my speed there is at 175 megabytes per second, but based on my results, it says I can only stream 1080p. That's down to my display because I'm plugged into a 1080p monitor. Yours will let you know what you can stream. It'll be depending on your monitor and your internet speed as well. So that's definitely worth doing. So if your internet speed is say 10 to 15 megabytes per second, don't try and stream a file which is 20 gigabytes. Try and stream a file which is one gigabyte. If you're using official apps like Netflix, things like that, you can actually get away with an internet speed of about two to four megabytes per second. But don't think you're gonna be streaming the 4K version of things, okay? It's gonna be your 720p HD ones. That's the first thing to do. The next thing which can actually stop you streaming and your buffering a little bit is your device itself. So go to settings, go to applications, and down here, under Manage Installed Applications, it will tell you how much space you have. Obviously, this is a new device of mine. I have 12 to 13 gigabytes of space, which is great. Loads of spare space on it. Means I can watch my file and it will be able to load into my device and watch with no problem. If your space is as close to the end as it can be, almost maxed out, so it's a red bar all the way along, the problem is when you stream a movie or a TV show or any form of video, it has actually downloaded temporarily. So you need space on your device for you to download it into a temporary folder, and then you need to be able to play that temporary folder, then it deletes itself and downloads a bit more. If you've ever watched a film where the buffer zone extends as it downloads a bit so you can watch it, and you knew even if your internet cut out, it would still watch up until that bit, this is what it's for. So you need to make sure you have some storage space on your device. So if yours is full, try and keep yourself about one gigabyte spare. OK, if anybody wants a video on how to add more storage to your Fire Stick and Fire TV for 2024, let me know in the comments. OK, next up, Fire Sticks and Fire TVs can only do so much and they've got plenty of RAM for what they do, which is streaming, which is running one application at a time. That's all you really do on a Fire Stick. You don't need more RAM for that. You don't need RAM like a mobile phone or like a PC because it only really runs one application at a time. But what can happen is too many applications can be open at once. So I'm going to show you an app. I'm going to show you how to install it afterwards. This app called Background Processors at List. So as it opens, it will show you how many apps are open. And I bet you most people of you have got loads of apps open. So let me know in the comments how many apps you actually had open. This is a fairly new Fire Stick, so I've only actually got three open. But I'd only be using one at a time, possibly two, if I run a VPN. OK, we'll get onto that in a second. So what you can do is click on Close All Apps. And what it will do will pop through all the apps you want to close. So you can click four stop and then push the back button. Then you can click four stop if you want to. I don't want to close my VPN, so I'm going to push the back button, but I do want to four stop the Netflix. So now I've only got one app running at the same time. Some people will say, while you're in there, clear the cache. I'm not a big believer of clearing cache. It may give you a little bit of space, but that cache is actually there to make an app load quicker. So by clearing the cache, you have to re-download more content to make things load. So 
we go into that on another video as well. So that's another option. More of you and many of you use a VPN as well. So VPNs overall will most likely slower your internet speed because you are running through a server. So if you are using a VPN, which I would recommend mainly for security, especially if you're using third party content and even official content because they use so much of your information and data these days is use a fast one. IP Vanish is a very fast one and is available in the App Store. So both these two apps, the background apps and processes list and IP Vanish are available in this App Store. So you click find, you can then type in here background. You can get your background apps and processes list, get it installed and let me know how many apps you had open. The difference with IP Vanish it is actually a paid VPN. So to use it, you do need obviously an account and we Thankfully for you guys, we have one of the cheapest offers on IP Vanish on the internet. And the link underneath this video will always have the cheapest offer on the internet for IP Vanish. So that's linked directly under this video and in the pinned comment. So if you want that one, check it out underneath. It's $2.99 and that gives you protection for your Fire TV or an Android TV or any PC device. You can log into multiple devices for one account. As simple as $2.99 a month. You can have unmetered device connections, servers in 75 plus countries, secure access to media, proxy web servers, verified no traffic logs, so they don't keep your traffic logs, so no one knows what you're doing on the internet, shared IP addresses, advanced encryption, so no one's gonna know what you are doing when you're online. Secure your streaming activity. Check out the link, you can have a read for yourself. And if you do follow through, that does help support the channel because we are affiliated with them, but obviously it's 2.99 a month. We're not making millions here but it does help us do what we do. Brilliant. Hopefully that was all useful for you. Let me know any other issues you might have or any suggestions, any videos you might be after. Let me know in the comments and I'll try and reply for you as well. I've been a bit busy over the last few weeks, so replies haven't been as good as they should be because it's been Christmas, but we've got a lot of good videos coming out. Um, even the latest one we've done, which was why people are cancelling Amazon Prime, you might want to check that one out as well. I might even link that in the description as well for you. So hit that thumbs up, hit that subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.